Welcome everyone to The Vlogan, a vlog for individuals with special needs and those who love them. I'm super excited today to talk to the district manager for Ohio of Safe in Home, Mark Prohaska. He's here to help me and you to learn about remote support. So welcome, Mark. Thank you, Logan. We appreciate you having us today. You and I have known each other uh, quite a little while and then just recently reconnected. I ran into you at the uh, Tech Summit for Nysonger Center. Yeah, pretty crazy, right? Who would have thought the two guys who uh, played softball and drank some beer together would be actually helping people in the world? Yeah, it's, it's pretty neat, isn't it? We've... Uh... We have found our true calling to, to help others yeah. still have a little fun in the meantime, but this world is smaller than we think at points in time. And so really cool to reconnect. Tell the viewers about Safe in Home um, and, and, you know, some of them might not even know what remote supports are. So if you could just explain that and then maybe talk a little bit about um, what makes Safe in Home different from maybe some other supports that are out there. And so when we talk about remote supports, really, I think from our company perspective is that it's different than in-home support. We're not caregivers and caregivers are great, right? Like a lot of people rely on people to help them do things on a day-to-day -day basis. And when it comes to remote supports, we're obviously not in people's homes. We're using technology to connect with people and help support them so that they can do the things they want to do and help them learn to do the skills so that they can take care of certain things on their own. And so it's different than a caregiving role that um, has been kind of that traditional role with in-home um, staffing. And today, as we all know, you know, with the DSP crisis, it's even more difficult to find those great people to come in and, and help support. So we come in and we partner with providers, families, individuals, and, and we say, hey, let's get to know the individual, just like everybody else wants to. And then where can we fit in to help them live the life they're looking for? What's important to them? What's important for them? And then fill in with supports as necessary. Well, I watched the videos on your website. And we were joking before we came on that uh, Safe in Home has a, has a great name and a great website. It's literally safeinhome.com. Um, and if I went on there and I, and I reviewed some of the videos and what, what struck me was that it actually can replace DSP providers in the sense of there aren't enough wonderful people to hire instead of, of a person coming in to maybe make a visit, they can have a remote visit. It was a person on there that talked about having a seizure disorder and she used to have to have support staff around. Are, are you familiar with those cases and can you explain kind of how, how that's different and why a person with a seizure disorder uh, could have a remote support versus having somebody around them all the time? Yeah, yeah. So we, we've seen it many times where we're helping people not only here in the state of Ohio, but we're a company working in 14 other states. And so, you know, we're working with uh, quite a few people that have different types of disorders that may lead to seizure activity. And so we couple technology with the remote support. So as a company, when we talk about the technology, those are the tools, right? The tools for us to be able to help provide the support. And so when it comes to seizure specifically, we have a variety of, of technology that we can incorporate. Again, it all goes back to the individual. Everybody's different. Even you know the individuals that experience seizures experience them for maybe different reasons. Some, you know, dehydration could lead into that. Some stress-induced, some are, are seizures that really at different points of times in the day. And so we, we really try to capture who they are, what's causing as much information as we can gather beforehand to incorporate certain tools and then to incorporate remote supports as well. So instead of, you know, with some people with seizure disorders, you know, they may have staff 24 seven in case of an emergency or in case of a seizure occurring. And so um, instead, we're able to offer a variety of sensor-based technology, um, wearable technology, um, that sort of thing in which there could be alerts to potential seizure activity. And then we can follow protocols that we develop ahead of time in a support plan. So if somebody, if somebody we believe is experiencing a seizure, we can use any number, again, based on the individual pieces of technology to try to help identify what their need is, to what extent, and who do we need to contact um, to alert, is it the emergency personnel or is it just notifying a loved one who lives next door? And so again, it's such a wide, there's no easy answer, right, for exactly what does that look like because everybody is so different. Um, but we are supporting, you know, 
a, a great number of people with um, different types of seizures and, and providing that avenue for them to have some alone time, some independence without having to have somebody with them necessarily 24 seven. And again, you know, it's, it, we're not about replacing HPC staff or any sort of loved one or anything like that as a remote support company. Maybe there's certain times of the day that is um, most beneficial for the individual. Maybe when they sleep um, is a great opportunity for them to have some alone time, for them to have some sensors, whether it's in their bedroom, living room, wherever. And for us as a company who's 24 seven watching certain alerts and things to if they happen so that we can respond accordingly. And so to provide people that alone time, that independence, that ability to do things on their own is really, um, I mean, we see it all the time. People are reaching out to us in terms of how can I lead my best life? How can I get more independence? I have this going on. And then from there, we can suggest some different ideas and thoughts on how we might be able to help with that. Awesome. So is there the ability for a person who, let's say that um, uh, she's living in, uh, in an apartment um, by herself, she has remote support. She does have a DSP that 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 comes and and visits with her. But on a day to day basis, she's living on her own. She needs to take medication. So, is there support for the medication? And then also, is there the type of thing where she, if she needs assistance, she could hit a button or call out with a a code word or something that would allow you guys to immediately be there? And is that does that happen? There's somebody there on the other end. Yeah, yeah. So great questions. You had a couple things in there. And I'd say the, to your first point about, you know, medication reminders. I can speak for myself, right? I take medicines on a day-to-day -day basis. And you know what? I use different forms of technology to help me <laughs> remember to take those. So we all use technology every day. You do, Logan, I do. We have smartphones, we have computers, we have technology all over the place. And so same opportunity for other individuals to be able to do the same thing. And again, going back to medication, um, you know, reminders, we have a variety of different pill dispensers that can automatically dispense pills for individuals. Um, they usually have some sort of alert that people can hear throughout the, their living space. And then we couple that typically with remote supports um, in terms of we can do a video call like we're doing right now. And so we schedule those based around medication times that we're well aware of ahead of time. So if it's 6 a.m. in the morning, 4 p.m., midnight, whatever time of day it is that individuals are scheduled to take those medicines. We typically schedule a call like this. And when it comes to remote supports, our staff are trained. We're more to listen. We're not going to tell people what to do. So we're not going to tell, hey, Logan, it's 4 p.m. You need to take your medicine. Like that's that's not our, our <laughs> way of operating. And again, it's more of a, hey, Logan, have you taken your medicine yet? It's four o'clock. I know typically um, this is your time of day that you want to eat some food, drink plenty of water. Yep, I've taken them. Awesome. So just let us know if you need anything. We're here at the push of a button. You know, that's great. For some individuals, it's us actually watching as they take those medicines. So in case they were to miss a dose, maybe they dropped it, weren't able to recover it from the floor for whatever reason. And so then we have protocols in place where we can call a loved one, we can call a paid backup provider and say, hey, you know, Logan was taking his medicines, it, it appears that he uh, maybe dropped the medicine, are you able to, to help him out? And so um, that's, uh, I guess, in part how we do that. And it's 24 seven, I think, to your, your latter part of that um, question was in terms of remote supports, we're always available, always there. So we do scheduled calls as well as at the push of a button, whether or not the individual has a tablet, um, where they can push a button, call us 24-7. Uh, but this is a, a Geocon device here, and hopefully the camera gives a good indication of how small this is. It's, it's a wearable type of device, uh, whether it's a lanyard, a wristband, there's a belt clip. A lot of people just put it in their pocket. But this has a button on it, red button right here, that someone can push if they were to ever need assistance for any reason, or they're just lonely. You know, during COVID, a lot of people were using remote supports as a way of, um, you know, saying hello to somebody. <laughs> they, they've mm -hmm. been, you know, in their home for um, months at a time. And so they're able to use their tablet, Geocom, say hello, and we're there to answer, you know, or if it's, I heard a noise outside. Okay. Um, if they had a camera outside, we can tap into that as well and actually say, oh, it looks like a squirrel knocked over your garbage can. 
and put people's minds at ease um, to what we've seen or heard or that sort of thing. So back to your question though, we do have technology that can connect us with the individual 24 seven. I love the idea that, that, that it's custom around the individual. It's not like, hey, um, you know, sometimes when you go to buy a car, it's like, well, here's the cars that we have, pick one. It sounds to me like it's, it, it's the, the whole environment is built around that individual working with their support administrator with the county board here in Ohio to develop that plan, working with the individual, the individual's uh, families, maybe uh, supported decision makers. Those people are all are coming together to figure out what's going to work for that individual. And knowing technology, it sounds like it's, it's pretty adaptable that, hey, this isn't working. Let's try something different. You're exactly spot on, right? It's a team effort. And so, and it's led by who? None other than the individual. So mm -hmm. as the individuals are working with their, um, you know, SSA on a, on a maybe monthly, bi-monthly basis, that sort of thing, and they're working their plan for the year, you know, that's where we get involved quite a few times where they're reaching out to see what options are out there. And, and that starts a conversation where we can meet with the individual, the case manager, the <clears throat> family, loved ones. We, we want as many people who the individual wants to be a part of that meeting first and foremost, but the more people that are a part of their life, and then we can learn a little bit about who they are, what they want. And again, it's person-centered, right? It's all about um, what they truly want to get out of the remote supports, the technology, that sort of thing. And then from there, we can build and customize. Like you said, it's it's really not a, a, a one-size-fits-all. We, we have nearly 60 different pieces of technology and whenever we're talking and we do presentations around the state, we're not just showing graphics of 60 pieces of technology because that's really not what it's about. We're in the people business. We use technology in a variety of ways to then help assist based on whatever those needs are. If it's visitor safety, medication reminders, um, it could be kitchen safety. Um, so a variety of different avenues that um, we can explore with people. Awesome. So um, what, what separates Safe in Home from other remote support groups? And then um, the other question is, uh, how do people say, okay, I, I've, I've listened to this vlog, I've researched it, I want Safe in Home as opposed to somebody else? Yeah, so to your first question, you know, I think there's a lot of great companies out there that are, are offering remote supports throughout the state, maybe other states as well. So I can't really speak to who they are and what they do, but I think I can speak to who we are as a company and our mindset um, is always focused on the individual and always person-centered. And it's been that way, <clears throat> excuse me, since the company you know started in 2012, really in that senior living segment and has evolved in 2017 with conversations with the state of Ohio since the beginning really of tech first and, and technology first in, in this state and now growing beyond the borders. Um, but again, you know, I, I can't speak for other companies. I can speak to the point of when we're hiring individuals to be a part of what we're doing. It's, it's a lot of individuals with backgrounds, myself working for the Franklin County Board of DD and ARC Industries. And so a lot of those that we're bringing on board have that same caring mindset, um, person-centered focus. And so that's really what we're looking for in terms of, can we listen? <laughs> can we get to the heart of what somebody really needs and wants? And then um, trying to fulfill those as best as possible. Awesome. And then, so if somebody is in an ISP meeting, are they able to say, hey, I saw this safe in home and say, this is who I would like to have as my provider for this? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's again, based on the individual choice of provider. And so if they hear, if they've heard about us and that's awesome, but if they've heard of somebody else, they can say, you know what, I want to go with company Y and talk to them. Many times we see individuals, they'll talk with us, they'll talk with another company, you know, which is great. I think, hey, let's get choices, right? Just going back to your analogy earlier, of shopping for an automobile, we probably go to multiple places, see what the what's going on, what's going to work best for us. And so same thing, we want it to work best for the individual. And so at the end of the day, we hope that they want to work with us at Safe and Home if they choose someone else. It's their choice, and, and that's what's great about uh, how the state of Ohio has set it up, that really it's, it revolves around the individual making choices for themselves. Awesome. Well, Mark, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being here and being on the Vlogan, a vlog for individuals with special <laughs> needs and those who love them, um, and telling us about remote supports and, and safe in home. Uh, I learned a lot, and uh, I'm sure other folks did too. How, how to get a hold of safe in home? What's the? I know we talked about the website. Is that the best place to get information? 
Yeah, so the other, I guess, best way, most of the times where we hear from individuals would be through the county boards of DD. So working with your case manager and, and you know, whether it's bringing up safe and home or remote supports, we, we work in all 88 counties. And so if someone is in a meeting and says, I want to um, talk about remote supports, typically our name is going to be brought up in that conversation. And obviously, you know, county boards know who to reach out to as well. But I'd say the majority of times, let your SSA know. And then from there, they'll reach out to us as a team, and then we can start those conversations. We also have, have 11 staff dedicated for different territories around the state of Ohio. And so when we go out to different events and conferences, we have our contact information. We hand out, obviously, our phone numbers, emails, that sort of thing. So we're out and about trying to educate individuals on remote supports and assistive tech and how they work and how they can benefit because we're still at the Really, we're still at the early onset, I think, of where this will all go someday as technology changes, as individuals' mindset change, as family members, guardians start to really understand how these type of supports can really be a benefit, especially during these difficult times where it's hard to find those great people to to help support. And so more so than ever before, we'll be here and, um, you know, just start those conversations at, at with your case manager, and then we'd love to chat. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We're going to let everybody see where they need to go to, to visit Safe and Home on the web and uh, maybe get, get some conversations going with some support administrators. That sounds great. Uh, hopefully we can stay in touch and, and let me know if there's anything else I can do to help answer questions. If, if anybody comes your way with that, we're here to help. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Vlogan. Please like, share, and subscribe to the RRPG channel so you can stay up to date with some of the latest news in the disability community.